Shalom. Giving all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rachahurash. Double honors unto the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do well and teach well. Shalom unto the elders and the elder bishops of Great Millstone as well. Shalom, Shalom. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect and hearty Shalom. To the sincere brethren laboring across the four winds of the earth, giving diligence to make their calling and election sure. Shalom, Shalom. So this lesson will touch on what's happening in Brazil, which is a sneak preview of what's to happen worldwide. You already have this happening as far as different countries around the world were doing this in the past year, year and a half or so. Let's read this header from this article and we'll go into it. Loads of the lessons edifying and it reaches the ears of the hopeful elect. And this came out today, Tuesday, November 2nd, 2020. And it was also published two days ago by a different news source. Let's read both headers. The one that came out the 20th says, Brazilians protesting election results have their bank accounts frozen. And what happened in China a few months ago, and uh, I did a lesson on it, I think other brothers uh, may have touched on the topic as well, is you actually had tanks roll out in the streets, you know, for people who are protesting the situation in China as far as their bank accounts being frozen. They had tanks roll out to the streets to present, to prevent, it's like it, to prevent people from withdrawing money from their accounts. And you have people's bank accounts frozen and their status immediately turned red on the, on the uh, 19 app out there. And you had a lot of those people be snatched up and taken into concentration camps. Literally, there's a video that's right here that shows these concentration camps. I'll leave a link to that video in the description and in Canada they had the same thing happen in the form of people taken to the streets to protest the convoy situation you know the uh, the trucker situation and whatnot you know their bank accounts were frozen you know so this is will be a a trending thing moving forward you'll have other countries do the same exact thing if you're protesting against the new world order you know telling people not to take the mot to the b you know these type of things will happen because the scriptures say exactly that you know just preset that let's get revelation 12 and 12. And it reads, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And part of Esau, Edom, the devil coming down with that great wrath, is the concentration camps, you know, arresting people, beheading people, so on and so forth. But there's a process that's called gradualism that leads up to that. Real quick. And I hate to bounce all around the place. But let's get this real quick. You have the G20 leaders have just agreed to a global Yo Jabba Jabba passport system. So now, you know, that UN um, World Health Organization treaty that a lot of nations sign expect, you know, those policies to be pushed on a global scale and what do you have them promoting right now and several brothers have shared this all roads lead to the MOT to the B I'll read this real quick you don't want this to turn into you you don't want you don't want to turn into this it's like it get chipped now so this may be one of the ways that they present the MOT to the B you know also, using convenience, you know, using uh, the false miracles, the pseudo, the pseudoscience. 
We'll just have to wait and see. But the fact that this billboard's up promoting the chip is a solution to not to turn into a zombie. You gotta pay attention to that, you know? All roads lead to the MOT to the B. Let's grab a quick precept. Because ultimately prophecy has to play out. All things must be fulfilled. This is second Exodus 15 and 1. And it reads, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And we may go back to second Exodus 15, or we may not. But let's get real quick the tribe of Asher the so-called Brazilians, that will be the South Americans from North South America to Central South America. It's lucky. Colombia to Uruguay. The Incas, it's lucky. Come on, man. My phone, man. See? Let's just sit time. That would be Colombia to Uruguay. That would be the tribe of Asher. And you have Natali, which would be South South America. Real quick, let's show you a map of ancient Israel. You have the tribe of Asher and Natali right next to each other in ancient Israel. And in the modern day world, you have the tribe of Natali, the tribe of Neptali. Chile and Argentina, southern South America, right next to the tribe of Asher, all over again, Colombia to Uruguay, and Brazil is a part of the tribe of Asher, and also you have along the northern coast, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guyana, and in those countries you have a good mixture of Benjamin. You know, but the Brazilians, the so-called Brazilians, that would be the tribe of Asher, <clears throat> and this is coming to Babylon the Great and other parts of the world real soon. You know, the United States—they're rolling out a social credit system as we speak right now. You know, based on a central bank digital currency, which is going to lead to the MOT to the B. You know. And this right here is a part of the gradualism that's going to lead up to the hour of temptation. Let's get a quick precept. This is Sirach 40 and 9. And Jacob's trouble is for the wicked of our people, but we still got to give warnings. We still got to give prophecy updates. This is Sirach 40 and 9. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked. The wicked of our people who won't repent who don't want to hear this word and for their sakes came the flood and in brazil what do you also have real quick you have the largest statue of treasure Borgier in the world ninety eight feet tall ninety two feet wide and this is a false image. The Lord does not look like this. And this is idolatry and blasphemy. And this is in Rio de Janeiro. You know? Constructed between 1922 and 1931. Let's get another one of these articles. <clears throat> so moving on. This is like a news and prophecy style type lesson. Just a little uh, update of what's going on outside of Babylon the Great. And those things are coming to Babylon the Great. That's why we do these videos. And it reads, this came out yesterday from newspunch.com and it's confirmed by other sources like the war room you know let's read both both headers to both articles Brazil 
This came out the 20th, two days ago. Lula, uh, it's like it. Brazil, Lula minister signs order allowing child services to take children away from free election protesters, people who are protesting the election, saying it was fraud, so on and so forth. They're freezing their bank accounts and they're taking away their children. You know, Brazil began snatching kids away from parents who question election results. And ultimately, this is going to happen in the form of Esau Edom, you know, using the threat of taking away your kids, taking away your job, so on and so forth. If you don't take that mark, man, they're going to use tactics like this. We see it playing out. Let's get Hosea 9, Hosea 9 and 13, and it reads, Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place, because if you look at the uh, Americas in general, you know, North, Central, and South America, a beautiful landscape, man. Ephraim is symbolic talk of the Northern Kingdom. When the tribe, when the tribes, the ten tribes, as far as the Northern Kingdom, um, came over here, they came over here in 722 BC, around that time, to flee Assyrian cap to flee Assyrian captivity. They were taken from Samaria into Syria, you know, Assyria, by King Solomon Ezra V, and taken into captivity. And the spirit jumped on them to say, we're going to get away from this. And they sailed around Africa and came over here. You know, you can read about that in the book of Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. And when they came over here, they started going off. And they're still going off to this day. So is the southern kingdom as well, you know. But eventually what happened, the Heavenly Father put the Spirit on Esau Edom to come over here and start jacking Jacob. You know, you had the Mayans and the Aztecs, you know, in the Incas were all into idolatry. Gad and Reuben as well. The Mayans, they were into sacrificing children, you know, sacrificing each other at, at an altar, you know, eating uh, the heart, so on and so forth, cannibalism. You had Gad, you know, uh, worshiping the moon, the stars, going off, man. Dirt and wolves and shit and bears and whatnot, man. And the Heavenly Father, you know, he sent the so-called white man over here as punishment for the Northern Kingdom going off. And also he sent the so-called white man to West Africa because Jake was going off over there in West Africa. You know, mixing and mingling with the Hamites and whatnot, you know. But back to the scriptures. But uh, real quick, let's read the precept. Hosea 9 and 13, Ephraim, as I saw, Tyrus is planted in a pleasant place because North, Central, and South America, this is a beautiful landscape, man. If you get outside the metropolitan area where you live at, America is beautiful. Literally, if you go to the coast out here in San Diego, man, <laughs> you know, just look at nature sometimes and appreciate it. It's beautiful, man. Go out to the mountains, you know. Beautiful landscape, man. Ephraim, as I, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place. For Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murder. And Esau Edom is also in the scriptures called the murder. You know, the thief, the violent man, the bloody man. And because of Jake going off, the Heavenly Father put the spirit on Esau Edom to come over here as part of biblical prophecy. You can read about that in Deuteronomy 28 and 49. Behold, I will send a nation from afar as swift as the eagle flyeth. You know, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Well, ultimately what happened is Esau came over here and he started jacking Jake up. You know, Columbus, the conquistadors, the, uh, the English, the French, the Portuguese. And you had a lot of our brothers and sisters get sent back to 
Europe and other parts of the world as tributes. You had North American and Canadian boarding schools. You had Esau, you know, ripping children out of the womb, feeding those children to Spanish mastiffs, you know, all because Jake was going off, you know. Ephraim being the northern kingdom, you know, what eventually happened is they came over here and what happened is because of their idolatry, the Heavenly Father jacked them up and sent the murderer over here, man. And you have a lot of, um, you know, Jake who are being found, their bodies are being found in Canada from those Catholic boarding schools, you know? Let's get something in 2nd Exodus 15. And it reads, 2nd Exodus 15, I'll start from one again. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I'll put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, Yahweh and Yahshai, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And this is all the gradualism that leads up to the MOT to the B. All roads lead to the Karagma. Then freeze the bank accounts, then, you know, threatening to take your children, threaten, threatening to kick you out of your home, gonna fire you from your job. That was all tactics that were that they were using, you know, with this uh with this uh this jab. They were using some of those tactics, you know. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna fire you from your job if you don't take it. We're gonna take your kids away. They were saying that out in Canada. This is second this is fifteen and two. And it reads, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Incredulity goes into lack of faith. And not all of our people have faith. You can see that by what's happening and has been happening the past month or so. You know, Charles Barkley, Kyrie Irving, Kanye West, Shaq. You know, Charleston White and other men, you know, the JC freak that came out to the brother Modesto, you know, yesterday, you know, and, all, and ultimately what the Heavenly Father is having play out is that uh, the, the two thirds, you know, they're not going to have any cloak for their sins because they're hearing about the word, this truth in some form or fashion. That way, the Heavenly Father is justified in killing your ass for not repenting, not believing. Let's get the next precept. Second, Exodus 15 and 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And prophecy has to play out. All the unfaithful, they're going to die in their unfaithfulness. Second Ezra 16 and 40. O my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils, those bad times, evil times, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. O my people, hear my word. That's a possessive statement right there. Talking about the Israelites. You know, the whole for the elect. They're the only ones that can hear. Lest are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear? Real quick. Let's read it again. Sirach 40 and 9. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. And the enemy is going to come in like a flood. And the wicked of our people, they're going to be swallowed up. And Jake. You know, they have no cloak, man. This word is going out at high velocity. This is Isaiah. Let's get 58. Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud and spare not. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And you have 
no excuses because you guys are all here in this word. You, you know, you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, they're hearing the word and it's falling upon deaf ears most of the time, you know? And the Heavenly Father is doing that so he's justified in destroying those who don't believe. This is Isaiah 59 and 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear, because he hears the prayers of the hope of the elect. His hand isn't short that he can't save us out of these calamities. You know, these calamities, the swore famine, death, destruction, that's for the wicked of our people and to test us. Real quick, this is Sirach 2 and 5, which I had on deck. Sirach 2. Let's go down to five and it reads, For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Yep. Believe in him and he will help thee order thy way of right and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go on the side lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him and your reward shall not fail. Isaiah 59 and 2 and it reads but your iniquities have separated between you and your power and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear I'm talking about two thirds of our people you know and you have a lot of these uh, Jake speaking out against the truth and speaking against what we're teaching you know guys making videos saying we ain't the Israelites you know we African so on and so forth but it's all good though everything has to play out prophecy has to play out and it's a part of the story and the storyline of things that you're going to have scoffers and mockers you know guys teaching false doctrine guys teaching for a filthy lucre denying the Lord Yahweh Shai saying they ain't no miracles we ain't supposed to worship him. We ain't. Know, we ain't know. The, we don't know the name. All a part of prophecy, man. Isaiah fifty nine and three, for your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues had multered perverseness, and that's what the Northern Kingdom is into down there in Brazil. Literally, you know, the largest statue. A Cesare Borgia in the world. And Brazil has two, I want to say two of the uh, cities with the largest populations in the world. You know, two in the top ten, I believe. I know Sao Paulo is one of them. I think Rio might be a second one. Either way it goes, those two cities are heavily populated, man. You know, and Brazil has one of the highest populations in the world. You know, let's just pull it up total population of Brazil and I'll get a few more scriptures and I'll, I'll end it so 216 let's see let's see yeah, 216 million. Thought it was higher up there, but it's all good. Sao Paulo has 22 million people in that city, which is literally one of the uh, most populated cities in the world, you know? 216 million in Brazil. Let's keep it going. This is Isaiah 59 and 4, and it reads, None call it for justice, nor any plead it for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. And that's the mentality of the two-thirds, man. Two-thirds of our people. They're not going to hearken. They're not going to hear. They're not going to repent. You know? And what they're going to be doing in these times to come, they're going to be telling on each other turning on uh turning brothers in you know 
looking to get that reward money in their chip. This is all social engineering and social conditioning. You know? That's what Esau Edom is doing as well. Creating a, a great narrative, you know, so he can be justified in the eyes of the simple to come after those who were speaking out, protesting, calling out his bullshit. At the very top level of that, you have the prophets. This is Isaiah 59 and 15. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. You know, ultimately when he comes to the truth, that's when the war starts, man. That's when the real war starts, you know. You fight in the flesh, you, know, you fight in yourself, you know. And then, ultimately, you know, it's uh, the hopeful elect versus the world. You know, even our own people, <laughs> you know, you're going to realize when you come into this thing, our own people, you know, two thirds of our own people are our enemies, man. You know, real quick, just precept that Matthew 12 and 30, and it reads, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathered not with me scattereth abroad. So there's no pity patting in this thing. There's no, you know, playing both sides. You're either with the program or you ain't with the program, you know. And that's how Esau Edom is going to present this thing as well in the form on the le of on the left-hand side. He's going to come down with great wrath in the form of if you're, if you're down with the program, then you're going to put my technology in your body. You know, and you're not going to speak it against, you're, gonna, you're not going to speak against it. You know, you're not going to be warning people not to take it, you know. And you're going to have a lot of Israelites who are going to be down with the program, man. They're going to be with the shits. We already see that playing out by different congregations out there telling you to take, telling you to take it in a roundabout way. Some in a direct way, IHPK. Some in a roundabout way. You know, HOI, Watching for Israel, IUIC, you know, and then guys who know the breakdown, but they don't really speak on it. They teach it, but they don't really teach it. Sakari, you know. It's all good, though. Matthew 12 and 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that scattered abroad is like it. Matthew 12 and 30, again from the top. He that is not with me is against me and he that he that gathers not with <clears throat> with me scattered the bride I'm gonna read it one more time so like at my reading tonight Matthew 12 and 30 and it reads he that is not with me is against me and he that gathered not with me is scattered abroad so you can't play both sides of the fence you either with the program or you not with the program you know, Isaiah 59 and 15. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Let's get another precept. This is Sirach 2 and 1. And it reads, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, prepare thy soul for temptation. So you're going to be tempted. So you can be made into fine gold refined. Sirach so 2 and 2. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. And make not haste in time of trouble. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai. You know? Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And we can see that being played out by what's happening. You have those who serve Yahweh Bashim Yashai, they're being made manifest, and those who serve not Yahweh Bashim Yashai. You know, and that goes back to let's just precept that. 
2 Samuel 3 and 1. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. The house of Saul, that symbolic talk of the two-thirds, you know. And the house of David, that symbolic talk of the hope for the elect. And you can see those who are in the spirit of the house of Saul, they're waxing weaker and weaker. But those who are of the hope for the elect, you can see brothers waxing mightier and mightier by the day, man. You know? Let's get a few more precepts and we'll close on down. Because ultimately, everything has to play out, you know? And this is a, a sign that we're in those times, man. You know? Let's read the first paragraph. And it reads, The Brazilian government froze the bank accounts of several individuals who participated in protests against election fraud. The move appeared to mirror the Canadian government's retaliatory actions against the truckers protesting Ottawa's trash scene mandates. And also the situation that happened in China where tanks were moved into the streets. You know, Lord's will, if I remember, I'll go back and I'll find that lesson and I'll, I'll uh, leave it in the uh, comments on the description, on the lesson, you know, in the, in the description box. You know, Lord's will. But in China, they had people who were protesting and taken to the streets, and they moved tanks into the streets, and those people's status turned red in the uh, 19 app. They have an app called 19, the CV19 app in China, which the whole nation of China runs on. And if you turn red on that, then, you know, basically, you're no bueno, man. You're no good, you know. And if people communicate with you, they're seen talking to you, affiliating with you, they'll turn red. Basically, they have a social credit system through technology that's already been put out in place. And other nations are going to follow that, that same standard. You know? <clears throat> and this is a part of the gradualism that leads up to the MOT to the B. All roads lead to the MOT to the B. So let's get the headers one more time. I think I got all the precepts and the points. Yeah. Let's see. Just making sure I got everything. Yeah. Let's get a uh, real quick. Revelation 2 and 10 and 3 and 10. Let's get 3 and 10 first. And it reads, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, preserve you, reserve you. That's what that word keep goes into in the Greek. I will. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You know, and this word world, in this precept, it's oikumeni, which is everybody. You know? Let's get Revelation 2 and 10. And we'll close on out. <clears throat> this is Revelation 2 and 10. Let's get Isaiah 59 and 1 one more time. Isaiah 59 and 1, and it reads, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. And he hears our prayers, our crying out, you know, and his hand is not shortened that he cannot save, you know. Who's the Lord's hand? Yahweh Shai, you know. And the name Yahweh Shai, it literally means salvation. You know? Yah, he, Yahweh Shai. You know, saves or is salvation. That's who salvation comes through. The Lord's Son, uh, you know, the Heavenly Father's Son. Last precept. And Lord's will, you found this lesson edifying, you know, informative, you know, comforting. Lord's will. This is uh, Revelation 2 and 10. And it reads, 
fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. And ultimately, when you come into this truth, you know, you're going to suffer, you know, you're going to be tried. Let's precept that real quick. Romans 8. It's Romans 8. I think it's about 17. Yep. Romans 8 and 17. I'll get 18 as well. I'll get 16 down to 18. Romans 8 and 16. And it reads, The Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Heavenly Father. And that's how you determine who's the Israelite. If they can receive this word, you know, not by the, the uh, color of your skin. You know. Romans 8 and 17. Because only the the whole for the elect are going to believe on this word in truth and sincerity. The 100% doctrine. It's like it. <clears throat> Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach. And if children, then heirs, heirs of power, and joint heirs with Hamashiach. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So we got to suffer, you know. You know, denying yourself, you know, sacrificing all, you know, and your time, your energy. You know, putting all ten toes in the ground, man, you know. And rolling with the punches, man. This is Romans 8 and 18. It's like it. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So we got to go through it to get to it. You know? It's a part of the process. We're going to be mocked, scoffed, hated, called every single thing under the sun. You know, falsely accused. They're going to bring in false witnesses. They're going to lie on us, say, you know, we're this and we're that. But it's all good, though. You know, that has to all play out. And what these couple articles we're going into, slack it, bear with me. <clears throat> what, those, what those few articles are going into is a build up to the hour of temptation, man. You know, them freezing bank accounts, snatching children, you know. Beautiful times, man. Beautiful times, but dangerous times, you know. But fear not, you know. Yahweh Shimei Shai is with us, man. This is Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Why? Because the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. You know? Look at the generations of old. Let's get there real quick because I got Sirach 2 pulled up. Uh, Sirach 2 pulled up. <clears throat> this is Sirach the second chapter. And it reads, let's get 9 as well. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Ultimately, that's the lot of the hopeful elect is to receive everlasting joy and mercy, you know, immortality, a crown, rulership, dominion. But first, we got to be abased, you know, and suffer. That's a part of the story. That's a part of the dynamic. Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? You know, we go into the accounts of men being delivered. Three holy children who were delivered by Yahweh Shai. You know, January the third chapter. The uh, apostles, when they were in prison. They were delivered out of that situation. You know, Elijah, you know, he was fed. 
you know, by birds, you know. He was delivered out of that situation, you know, and other men, you know, who were delivered. Those are the accounts that we go to, you know, to comfort us, man. This is, you know, also, if you go into the story of Exodus, man, we cried out to the Heavenly Father, and what did the Heavenly Father do? He sent Moses and Aaron, you know, and after that, he sent plagues upon Egypt, and he delivered all of us, man. And this time, he's only going to deliver the remnant, those who actually believe. This is Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon his, uh, that called upon him, that called upon him? Well, to call upon him, you got to know his name, you know? And that's something that he gave us. So it's like got Sirach pulled up. Let's just go get it. This is Sirach 17 and 10, and it reads, And the elect shall praise his holy name. So we got the name, you know. quick <clears throat> Matthew 24 Matthew 24 and 30 and it reads yep I'll get right to the point this is Matthew 24 and 31 if you read up it talks about the son of man you know appearing talking about the Lord Yahweh Shai coming back with great power glory and all the splendor, you know, coming back as an angelic force. You know, he scriptures say he will not meet thee as a man. This is Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And it says the elect shall praise his holy name. So before they're actually physically gathered they're going to be gathered through the word and they're going to be calling upon the name you know Baruch the second chapter says that you know also in um, the book of Zephaniah says that you know I will restore unto them a pure language so they shall call so they can call upon my name roughly paraphrasing you know Zephaniah 3 and 9 so we got the name and we got the language this is Revelation 2 and 10. I'm going to close on that right here. Lords, will you find the lesson edifying? Revelation 2 and 10, and it reads, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Ten is the number of perfection, you know? Seven being the number of completion, ten being the number of perfection. You know? I think it may be the other way around. It's like it. Yeah. Bear with me, though. This is Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. The point in that scripture is, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And ten is the number of perfection, because seven is the number of completion. It's like it. But I'll read the precept one more time, I'll close on out. This is a Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Why? So you can be tried. And you're going to actually have some men who are actually going to have to lay their life down for this thing, man.
and that's a reality you know and as we get closer to the end you're gonna hear more videos saying that you know because it's not um, a, uh, a thing where we do videos all the time and talk about you know uh, the deliverance because not every single brother is going to have that lot you know some brothers are going to actually have to go through the ultimate sacrifice which we believe through the spirit you're not going to feel but we still have to talk about it to properly prepare you so when you go through that you were told several times that that's a part that's a part of the dynamic that's declaring all the counsel of the most high unto you you know we'd be bringing you into the game unprepared you know bringing you into the championship game the super bowl without declaring all the defensive and offensive strategies to you revelation 2 and 10 fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer fear none of those things behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison Esau Edom that ye may be tried that's why ye may be tried by the Lord and ye shall have tribulation ten days be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life you know you should have tribulation ten days why so when the heavenly father you know delivers you out of that situation he's going to deliver you out of that situation and give you immortality perfection you know be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life and ultimately that's why we're doing this man is to receive that reward and we got to go through the straight gate and this is all a build up that leads to the hour of temptation so I'm going to close on that right here. Lord, Joe, you found the lesson edifying. In closing, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechach Wadash. Double honors unto the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings unto the hopeful elect and the hearty Shalom to the men of valor and DTA camps. And until next time, next lesson, Shalom, DTA, Wah, Ababa, Ba. Soon. Soon, soon, soon. Shalom.